John Davis, and this is Motor Week. Join us as the Alfa Romeo Stelvio races into the SUV craze with Italian style and performance. Pat Goss has advice on keeping your car's color colorful. Roger Mecca slips behind the wheel of a classic Camaro Z28. And Honda goes sport injected for their latest Civic. So come drive with us next. Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine. While the Giulia sedan did a lot to cement Alfa Romeo's place in the Euro luxury sport market here, these days no brand can really compete stateside without an SUV. And indeed, the Stelvio was always a part of Alfa's return strategy for America. So let's take a look at this upstart utility and find out if more familiar European brands should be getting a little nervous. The 2018 Alfa Romeo Stelvio is indeed the right vehicle at the right time. As even with luxury sport brands, utility vehicles continue to take sales away from sedans. So it's not just a good idea for this re-emerging Italian brand, it's really a necessity. And while no one may have seen that coming 20 years ago, it almost makes sense at this point, as car makers have been able to infuse utilities with the same amount of performance, comfort, style, and even efficiency as their four-door siblings, while giving buyers more flexibility for carrying cargo. Behind the wheel of this Italian two-row ute, things are very quiet and luxurious. It's very stable, and like most of its competitors, drives more like a tall hatchback than a crossover-style utility. Seats are more than comfortable, but if you don't mind a sportier ride, upgrading to the TI Sport will get you some phenomenal sports seats. For now, all Stelvios come with a smooth-running 2-liter turbo I-4 engine. It offers best-in-class standard horsepower at 280, accompanied by 306 pound-feet of torque. At full song, it sounds more like an exotic six or even eight. In opposite fashion from the Giulia sedan that the Stelvio is based on, we'll have to wait a little while longer for the high-performance Quadrifoglio version to arrive. Huge column-mounted paddle shifters are available to control the 8-speed automatic transmission with great precision. And if you ask for manual control, that's what you get. All Stelvios are all-wheel drive. Now, it doesn't feel leaps and bounds more spirited than the competition, at least without having the opportunity to drive them back to back. But it sure does feel hellaciously fast and super capable. Zero to 60 is 5.4 seconds, and only a few ticks behind the Julia 2.0. Like Julia, there's a DNA drive mode selector. Leave it in dynamic for the best results, and you won't find the ride harsh at all. Steering is quick, it feels planted, and just right with loads of grip for cornering. With Alpha's Q4 all-wheel drive system, the front wheels only are fed power when necessary. Otherwise, it operates as a rear-wheel drive sportster. Now, Stelvio performs just fine in all other drive modes as well. It just kind of gives you the impression that's not where it wants to be. At 111 inches, wheelbase is exactly the same as the Giulia, but with a little more material outbound. Overall length comes in about two inches longer. For the most part, it shares the same aggressive face, but lines are a little more pronounced, especially down the sides. There are nine different tire and wheel packages ranging from standard 18s to 20s. Even the back end treatment is gorgeous. We almost wish Alpha would have just called it a Julia wagon, even though we all know to most Americans that would kill it. Base Stelvios come fairly well equipped, but most buyers will either travel down the Lusso or Sport Road for upgrades that match their priorities. Wood and nicer leather for the luxury-minded, aluminum trim for the sport-minded. Like the Julia, there are only minor traces of any Fiat Chrysler lineage. Materials and fit and finish are on par with European alternatives. It's a very inviting space with only a fussy electronic shifter to detract from the serenity. 
Rear seat room is not plentiful, but certainly doable for two adults. Capacity in the cargo hold at 18.5 cubic feet is decent, but short of most rivals. Folding the rear seat back will expand the space to 56.5 cubic feet. Also like the Giulia sedan, the Stelvio is technically mid-sized, but lies more in the middle ground between compact and middleweight SUVs. Government fuel economy ratings are 22 city, 28 highway, and 24 combined. For a reasonable energy impact score of 13.7 barrels of yearly oil use with six tons of CO2 emissions. Stelvio based pricing is a very reasonable $42,990, though options are many and costly. We figure most Stelvios will go for low to mid 50s. According to the folks at Alpha, there was no point in adding yet another utility vehicle into a congested pool full of very nice import and domestic branded luxury crossovers, unless it was the most powerful, highest performing vehicle in its class. The 2018 Alfa Romeo Stelvio is just that. It's a fabulous effort. So Alfa's biggest challenge will be getting butts in seats to try it out. Once they do, Stelvio will sell itself. The Mustang Camaro grudge match began on September 29, 1966, the day the Camaro went on sale as Chevrolet's answer to Ford's two-year-old pony car sensation. And from the start, Camaro's performance standout was the virtually race-ready Z28 package. Well, our Roger Mecca is always looking for classic standouts, and when he had a chance to drive a first-gen Z28, he quickly buckled up for a joyride. When most people think of classic American pony cars, the first one that comes to mind is usually the Mustang, like this Shelby GT350. But not me. I like the Mustang too, but for me, the quintessential classic American muscle car is the Camaro Z28, the one that put Ford on its heels for decades to come. By 1967, roughly one million Mustangs were already on the road. To compete against Ford's sporty coupe, the Bowtie Brigade turned to the Chevy 2 Nova Supersport, but it lacked the styling pizzazz of the Mustang. So GM engineers came up with something entirely new with one goal in mind, to beat the Mustang in every possible way. In fact, when asked by the auto press what the name Camaro meant, they replied, it's a small ferocious animal that eats Mustangs. Chevy made a lot of different variants of the Camaro over the first few years, but this is the one that everybody lusts after the 1969 Z28. Dude, this particular car is my absolute favorite GM car of all time. Chip Miller is the owner of Eurostar Auto Gallery outside of Baltimore, specializing in rare and exotic automobiles. But he's also a massive fan of the 69 Z28 and has been since he was a teenager. I think this car will stand the test of time because it has been so heralded over the years as being just a very versatile racer, uh, a versatile street car with the look and the feel of American muscle. It's just got it all going on. The Z28's main rival was the Mustang Boss 302. But in terms of sales, there was no competition. The 69 Z28 outsold the Boss by a 12 to 1 margin. Even in terms of total Camaro numbers, Chevy had closed the gap on Ford, selling only 50,000 fewer units in 1969. In just three short years, the Camaro had officially become a serious adversary for the mighty Mustang. I love a good underdog story, and in a lot of ways, that's what the Camaro was. At the time, the Mustang was the icon that everybody was chasing after, and this was just an upstart. But in a lot of ways, it was also a better car. The $458 Z28 package gave owners quicker steering, better suspension, and for the first time ever, the option of four-wheel disc brakes. And though precision steering and classic Detroit muscle don't always go hand in hand, the Z28 gave me plenty of confidence to punch the accelerator no matter how twisty the roads got. And by design, the Z28 was built to put down fast laps on a track with a focus on handling. But for some consumers, that was actually a bad thing. Now, gearheads might have wanted a straight line speedster, but that's not what the Z28 was. It got to 60 miles an hour in about eight seconds, and it was built for the racetrack, not drag racing. 